Okay, I'm done. Oh, Ray, <laughs> if people could see the whole video to know that you are dancing so hard through the entire thing. <laughs> yeah. Well, not through the entire show, just the entire just, intro. Just the entire intro. Yes, yeah. yes. Yeah. If I if uh, I tried to if I tried to chair dance through the entire show, uh, the EMTs would be here at a certain <laughs> point. So we don't want that. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So uh, welcome. Happy Tuesday. It is That's indeed a happy Tuesday. Uh, we got lots of uh, Toyota news and what Kia news and everything we else news. news. Yeah, we got, yeah news. we got news today. Yeah. So yeah, we'll, we'll but, but go the into Toyota that. news. The Toyota news. When I saw that article yesterday, that. I all I all I thought to myself when I saw that article was you always saying never count Toyota out. Yeah. That's I've, I've I mean Toyota look they became they were not the first with a hybrid battery, right? But who perfected it? Uh I'm pretty sure they did. Yeah, I mean like there's nobody who beats Toyota in hybrids. So I mean, and we have, you know, one article here about uh, shareholders of Toyota sort of saying they're going to kick some people to the curb for not going all in on EVs. Um, you, you know, whatever on that on that part of it. Like, uh, I know basically what it's happening is the shareholders, they got rid of the CEO. Yes. Uh, Mr. Toyota himself. Yes. The grandson of the founder. Um and then now they're saying, "Hey, look, board, if you're not on board with EVs, you're you're in the wrong segment. You're in the wrong market. We need, we want that focus to be there." Yeah, um, I, I I think this seems to me a little premature. Look, you just got rid of the CEO. The new CEO's in there. You, like, take well, a minute, yeah. take a couple beats to find out where the company's going to go before you start threatening to kick people off the board. You know, and, and maybe, maybe, just maybe, I, I, you know, I don't know, I could be wrong, but maybe, just maybe, these people that are complaining uh, weren't necessarily privy to everything that Toyota was trying to do or what they're intending to do. Um, yeah. So, yeah, because as it turns out, there was a second article that was published yesterday, um, which I think addresses many of these unhappy shareholders concerns and um, puts vaults Toyota into the forefront again of what could be coming down the pike for EVs. Um, you know, and, and we, th this would, wouldn't be the first time that, that we've this ever article, mentioned right? solid state batteries yeah but you know, that, that's where they've always been trying to to put some of their money is because they think solid state batteries could be the future and and so what was the article that that suddenly appeared yesterday afternoon yeah so and it's not just solid state which yeah i think everyone sort of has agreed for a long time solid state was the way to go which is whether it can be affordable and exactly. mass produce and everything else so toyota's willing to bide their time um and and put that energy and money into solid state and say, look, we'll take a back seat while everyone else runs forward and we're going to do this. But, you know, here comes this article, but not only the solid state, which mm -hmm. will give a range of 900 miles or more, which seems uh, completely unnecessary, but but good. Like, I'm, I'm not yeah. knocking it like that would be fantastic. But um, they're doing lots of different batteries. They're their new lithium ion pack. Uh, will double the range of the current battery pack used by the BZ4X, and we'll get uh, a range of 621 miles. That's that's so, a pretty good range. And and yeah. even if even if you're in the north or northeast in the yeah. winter, and and let's say you lose 15 percent, that's what 90 miles. Of rate, so you're yeah. still at, you're still at 530 miles worth of range, even in the cold weather. And I'm guessing the, the there'll probably be heat pumps in these anyway, so even, you'd but, leave and lose less than that. But yeah, I mean you're right. And these new batteries will 
charge from 10% to 80% in less than 20 minutes, which of course is the complaint about the really crappy BZ4X right now. Yes. 382 miles and a 30 minute charging time, which is just way too long. And you know, once you get to my age, if if you can do anything in 20 minutes, you'd be you'd be pretty pleased. Yeah. Um, <laughs> just saying. But, uh, but the the costs are coming down on all of these. Yes. Uh, the range is going up. So at the same time, uh, so it, it's great. Then they have uh, all kinds of other batteries coming out. The thing I thought was interesting in here was this: the the EV segment break down by twenty thirty. Uh, 600,000 large crossovers and SUVs, 360,000 midsize crossovers, 360,000 compact sedans and hatchbacks, 240,000 large sedans and hatchbacks, 120,000 MPVs. Um, yeah, I don't see any uh, sedans in there, any um, regular size sedans. Where, where's the Camry? Um, well, that, that might be considered a compact sedan. You think so? I think the Corolla, but I wouldn't think the Camry would be compact. Well, it depends what what. How I mean, you, yeah, it depends on how they how, how you define compact by yeah. then. Um, you know, because what used to be compact is now. You know, you look at like for instance uh, the new Honda Civic. That's like fourteen times bigger than the original <laughs> Honda Civic, and yet it's still considered a small car. So yeah. You know, everything, everything that's, well, I, I shouldn't say that. I'm trying to think of a nice way to say this. Everything that, that starts out small seems to get bigger. Um, and, and then we seem to be okay with the fact that what was once considered small is now considered good-sized. Yeah. <laughs> uh, this yeah, conversation so, can go in so many different yep, directions. Yep. I'm trying to I'm trying me. to keep it Zach approved here. Yeah, uh, <laughs> please keep me keep me from going off the rails here. <laughs> but uh, to Igor's point here, I don't know why his picture's not coming up. That's interesting. Uh Toyota Mirai's aren't selling so well. Um Toyota might scrap that. Let me tell you, uh, Igor, I sold Toyota Mirai's. Got amazing uh, bonuses for doing it. And almost every single one I ever sold come came back on the bed of a tow truck. Wow. Um, yeah, those are just not people were not happy with those cars. Um, just weren't happy with or even with free refueling, people just weren't happy with those. Um, wow. which is too bad because inside they're very nice vehicles. Yeah. Um, but they just hydrogen just isn't there yet. Aren't they um, aren't they still to some degree committed uh pretty strongly to hydrogen, at least in their in in their home market? In their home market, and I think in the short run, um, part of that is they own the hydrogen plants. Uh -huh. So um, they put a lot of money into that. And it's not just their cars. They, they actually own the refueling stations, um, most of them in California. So, yeah. so that's um, – so I, I know they're, they're not – opting out of that. I think Justin and I have always agreed that hydrogen seems to make most sense in, in large commercial vehicles. Yes. Uh, big rigs and, and, and such that they make sense there. Uh, buses. Um, it makes less sense in, in your car uh, currently. And it doesn't seem like the infrastructure is growing very fast on those. I mean, the okay. first hydrogen plant in California was under Governor Schwarzenegger. And now uh, we're, we're many, many governors away from that. And we still have like 18. Um, yeah, I, I, it just that that I'm not going to say that there isn't a future for it somewhere. Perhaps there is. Perhaps it's somewhat limited. Um, but it, it seems to me, based on sales and sales and sales statistics, um, that when it comes to alternative fuel type vehicles the evs seem to win out convincingly over the hydrogen powered vehicles yeah and you like to compare vhs and beta a lot of times yes i think this is definitely one of those one of those situations of you know maybe because uh we always say vhs won out yeah but if you know the industry uh beta actually was used 
inside the industry mm -hmm. most. So in yeah. production studios, they didn't use VHS. They used they used uh, larger format beta tapes. So, and I think that could be the thing here. Hydrogen is great for larger vehicles. I think um, it's cleaner. It's better. I know they're working on hydrogen ships uh, and boats. So, mm -hmm. and that makes sense because hydrogen is already at ports, a lot of ports. Yeah. So that makes sense there. Um, I don't. I we'll see if it goes passenger vehicle. I just doubt it. Um, well. I, I I was just pretty impressed with with what appears to be a much stronger um, commitment to EVs and EV batteries from yep. Toyota than what anybody had anticipated. Um, and and I'll frame it this way if I can. I was with Acura when the MDX first came out. And I remember Dennis Manns, who was in charge of uh, of marketing or whatever for Acura, and and we were like the last ones to have an SUV like that. And the way Dennis framed it was, he said, "If you're getting to the dance late, you better bring a really great date." Yeah, and and that's what the MDX was, and perhaps um, with Toyota sort of kind of getting to the dance a little late with their with a real deep serious commitment to EVs um that they're going to bring a really great date yeah. that'll that'll still keep them on on top of of their game and and still make them one of the world's most desirable vehicles yeah and when you start looking into you know the batteries that they're talking about and and all the research that they've done and all the experiments that they're doing on them, you realize they've never been out of the game. They just haven't been up front and been like, hey, yeah, we're there we are. And they've kind of said, look, we are not anti-EV. We just don't think the world's ready for a full transition yet. But that hasn't stopped them from research and development on this. Mm -hmm. So, you know, I think that says something, too. They've they just play their cards close to the vest. They're, they're not out there hyping up like so many others. You know, there are car companies that have announced they're going to beat Tesla to the truck game and they're going to release this vehicle in five years from now. I'm like, well, yeah. that's, that's not really a, a beating Tesla to the game because we don't know when any of these vehicles, including the Cybertruck, uh, will actually come out. So, you know, there's a lot of publicity out there, but Toyota's just not really running towards that. They seem to be just like, we're going to come out and we're going to release stuff. And then people are going to be like, oh, my goodness. Mm -hmm. Like, and, you know, and I think that's where where it's going to be. Yeah. Uh, yeah I, I, as Susanna says, are they late or are they just on their own time? <clears throat> well, I, I think I, I think they're on their own time. I But I think many would suggest that they're they're late to the, which is why they have shareholders who seem to be so upset with them um that that doesn't mean that they won't end up producing um what be what could become the most popular electric vehicles out there who knows i mean i i don't know what the future holds i do know that um i i don't think most japanese companies um, pound their chest quite the same way that other companies do uh, to announce how wonderful they yeah. are, because that's just that's just not the nature of the Japanese people to want to bring um, uh, that much attention to themselves. They 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 do it slowly, and, and they do it by producing things that suddenly everybody goes, oh, "I got to have that." That yep. I, that's what I have to have. That's exactly what I have to have. Um, it, it's there's there's a lot of PR out there announcing things that are never going to happen. Yeah. Um, because that's just that's just the business. Um, but you know, Toyota, they don't they they do it through action, not through words. Yep. That's the difference. They do. They do. And they've always been, you know, as as uh, Phil and Igor and Sam have said here, 
Uh, they don't, they've never hyped anything. Yeah. They're just quiet and they just come out there and sort of what you're alluding to kind of what Henry Ford and Steve Jobs did so well was they they're out there creating what people want before people know they even want it. Exactly. I mean, exactly. That, and that and that's the key to that type of success to to actually develop things that people don't even know that they want, but then make make it so indispensable that people have to have it. And, and, and then perhaps at some point in their lives, they go, how did we ever live without an MP3 player? How did we ever live without digital audio? I mean, you know. Yeah. And, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, well, yeah. Like Apple come out with the iPod. Like you yeah. didn't know you needed that, but now you can't live without it. Exactly. It's just one of those, and Toyota is sort of that of the car makers. It, it's just one of those things where you're, it, they sort of get that. And, you know, to your point, like uh, they, when we we're talking about the shareholders, you know, one of the things that caught me is one of the shareholders that's pressuring Toyota and threatening to get board members removed is the California Public Employees Retirement System. Uh -huh. Anyone who lives in California knows those people very, very well. Um and and what they're about and there's a lot of pressure there but that those are the names that are getting thrown around in the article is more uh government unions that mm -hmm. are doing that it's not the buying public that's pushing toyota here um because i think a lot of people sort of trust in toyota they're going to come out and do things the way they want um and, and jared who has ipods uh everyone who has an iphone has an ipod um, it's just baked into the iPhone. <laughs> uh, it's just an iPod that can also make phone calls. Yes. Um, which mine does not do. So don't even try to call me. Uh, but yeah, I mean, it just, I think the public has a lot of trust in Toyota and I think they take that very seriously. So I think that's part of why they're sort of going into this maybe a little bit slower than, GM or Ford or other people who are just it, running you know, with it. Maybe, maybe the difference will be that when Toyota actually comes out with electric vehicles in bulk, um, they won't be losing money for everyone they wholesale to their dealer body. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You know, that, that could be the really big difference. You know, instead of being feeling like they needed to be rushed into something like Ford and GM and the others who who admit that they have no margin built yeah. into these vehicles and that in many cases from from the manufacturer standpoint, it's actually costing them uh, a, a large amount of money um, every time they wholesale one. They, you know, I mean. It's not it's not lucid money for everyone that gets wholesaled and sold, but it's it's you know if they're losing four or five ten fifty thousand dollars per vehicle sold, um, my guess is that you know Toyota taking their time figuring things out and and they were talking about what is it the Giga manufacturing and what's that the Giga you know, Press and yeah, yeah. the Giga Press so that there's less parts in you. Know, you know, by the time they do it, they'll they'll actually do it and make money at it. Yeah. Where where, you know, many of the others haven't quite figured that out yet because they they just had to rush right in. Yeah. And, I, you know, I, our title today, you know, a little clickbaity as it will always be. Yeah. I'm not Zach. I'm not going to I'm not going to start toning it down. Um, that's for sure. But, um, you know, is this a Tesla killer? Obviously, it's not a Tesla killer. That's all. You know, that's always just a dumb thing to say, I think. Yes. That's like, you know, remember when Dodge came out and Ford stopped existing? Um, <laughs> you know, it's, it's not a Tesla killer, but it's a good competition. And you know, we've talked on the show several times when Toyota got a hold of the Model Y and broke it apart and said, holy crap. This is a, a feat of engineering. This is beautiful. This is amazing. And then they started building and uh, reconstructing some of their plants after Giga Mexico, which is not even built yet. Yeah. Uh, 
but they have the you know the idea and the plans and they know how this is being built in there and they went yes that's the way to do it so i i said then you know as soon as they said that it just reminded me you never count toyota out they're going to go on their own time they're going to do these things and i i think you're right right they're not going to come out and be losing money on their on their evs they're going to come out and they're going to make i don't think they're going to make like Tesla style profit at first, no, which, but they're going to make the same profit they do on their ice vehicles. Um, and they'll just keep, and they'll make that transition and they'll just keep going. Uh, that's my prediction on, on how it comes up. And, and you'll see a real Tesla challenger come to the table. Oh, absolutely. Especially if, if they can get more range out of their batteries, than um, Tesla gets out of out of their batteries. I, I mean, because <sighs> do you need a vehicle that gets 621 miles in range for an electric vehicle? Or better yet, do you need one that gets 900 plus miles of range? Um, you know, every, everybody and their brother knows I drive a Mini. I don't drive a lot, but I drive a Mini. Now, I can tell you, even, you know, like at, at 30 or 31 miles to the gallon, on a 13-gallon tank, I mean, how far am I getting? You know, I'm not getting 500 or 600 miles before I have to pull into a yeah. gas station and fill up. It, You know, that's not happening on a gas car. Um, but if, if Toyota can say our cars get a 620-mile range, and everybody else's is in the fours and four eighties. Who do you think the people are, whether, whether they would actually ever need that range becomes irrelevant. Yeah. Oh yeah, absolutely. Uh, you know, that's, you know, we were talking before the show about that. Like I, I have said the 500 is that magic number mm -hmm. because it's more than the ice car gets. And, uh, but people have all this range anxiety and, and there's so much, lack of education on evs out there uh, still to this day there's so much lack of education on evs and people have these wild crazy ideas about them that um you know that i i do put some onus on tesla look mm -hmm. if you're going to be the number one player you better have started educating people but um you know hopefully they'll start doing that but i think range anxiety being number one for a lot of people sure um uh, and so you get over 500 miles i think a lot of that sort of evaporates for people and they're like, okay, well, that's, you certainly get up to 600 and where you're way above most ice vehicles. Like they oh. just, you know, all that evaporates, even though mm, almost nobody's going to use that kind of range. All that <laughs> no. It's just not gonna... Yeah. I mean, you know, affordable, most... by the way, they have to be affordable at those ranges. Like yes. I, I get the lucid gets like 521 miles, whatever it is, but it's a hundred and eighty thousand dollar car. Yeah, you look, like, look what you're paying for the car. Yeah, uh, yeah. And, yeah. You know, uh, if if you could get three, three and a half or four Toyotas for the price of one Lucid, yeah, that, that yeah. might get six hundred miles in range. I, you know, I guarantee you, uh, you know, people are going to buy the Toyota long before they buy the Lucid. And and truth yeah. of the matter is. You know, perhaps when when Toyota really um, makes a presence in the EV field, um, Toyota probably, excuse me, Lucid probably still won't exist anymore. You know, um, how how long can you go where it's costing you five hundred and fifty five thousand dollars for every car that you sold? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Based um, on the losses, and I will say again. Um, I see it takes too long to charge an EV as mostly not true. Yeah. It does not, not take as long as most people think it does. Yeah. Um, and, and I don't know if, uh, if this per if she knows how long it takes to charge an EV, I'm not yeah. saying her, I'm just saying general public wise, I think it takes, you know, 30, 45 minutes, an hour. I think Brandon the other day when we yes. had him on, it's like, it takes like an hour. No, I mean, like it takes. 15 minutes is the average at most. Um, you know, yesterday I went out and I charged my vehicle twice because they just had free charging in both places. I went to eat lunch and 
I charged up and it was free and came back down. Um, yeah, 20 minutes to go from zero to 80%. Yeah. yeah. And, and it, if the vehicle has 620 mile range, yeah. well, guess what? That that means in in at 80%, you have a 500 mile range and it took you 20 minutes to get there. That I mean, that's nothing. And uh, how long did it take you to sit in line to uh, charge that at Costco, Jared? Yeah. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> the Costco lines always amuse me um, just because I not because I've look, I've sat in those lines twice in my life. Um, yeah, they just weren't worth the two dollars I was saving for me <laughs> to sit in those lines. But, you know, people like take pictures on social media of the EV lines and those couple areas where people are waiting to charge their vehicle. And I go, well, I can go to any Costco and get the same effect. Yeah. Um, so. That's just sort of silly, but uh, you know, it just, you know, 15 minutes, like I've said before, I'm on a road trip, pretty much the only time I got to go and actually sit and wait to recharge, uh, 15 minutes. I, I go to the bathroom, I get a drink, come back pretty much done at that point. Yeah. And then, you know, I'm, I'm plug and go. But most of the time I said, you know, I went to, uh, I went to lunch the other day. They had a whole bunch of Tesla superchargers, and then they had like twelve level two chargers, which are free. Yeah. Well, I just plugged into the free. I didn't really need to charge up. I just plugged it in, went and had lunch, came back down. I was at ninety percent. Like, okay. Um, yeah, and for Igor, who will say something, yeah, I know I'm not supposed to be at ninety percent. I accidentally had it set too high. Yeah. Um, and also, uh, Igor, stop apologizing for your typos. It makes me self-conscious for all of my typos, <laughs> some of which get into the thumbnails. Um, so uh, he's he's always so concerned about his typos. And I'm just like, oh, no, <laughs> don't judge my typos, please. Yeah, um, we all have typos. Uh, let's see. He's a, Jared says he gets a 30-minute lunch. He'd be unable to fill up an EV. Um, I am missing the point because uh, you could just either charge while you're at work or um, that would be perfect to pull up to wherever you're going to go eat lunch, plug in, go get lunch, come yeah. back out and go and your car would be full. Um, so, uh, yeah. So, yeah, I, you're right. I don't, I don't get it. Um, people, and then I, you know, I, I think I think if I may, that, that mm -hmm. people make a really big deal out of that extra five or 10 minutes to, to get a car, an electric vehicle charged from zero, from 10% to 80% in, in 20 minutes, as opposed to the, the 10 minutes that, you, you know, you piss away at the gas station when you're filling the car with gas. I mean, you know, 10 minutes, 20 minutes, it's not that big of a deal. And, if you can go 500 miles in range because you're only at 80 percent, that's still further than you can go with your gasoline powered vehicle. So I don't know. I, I you know, I I once thought when we all started this that, you know, it takes too long to charge. Well, what I've learned is it doesn't really. And no. and, you know, I, I I've seen people piss away more time doing other things than the time it would actually take to charge their vehicle. Uh, and like you do, you take advantage of free charging when it's there. And you don't worry about it. If you're doing something else and you can charge it while you're there, then what difference does it make? I don't, Jared, you have people on the comments um, who own EVs, and you have me telling you, no, it does not take 45 minutes. I literally own one, and I charge it, well, once a week. But... Still, all the time. Um, and I do want to answer this one. Uh, no, it does not. And it bothers me that they do not offer all the window washing and all that stuff. Because uh, the other day I had charged up and I was driving home and then I had a bird do what birds do. Um, oh, sorry. That was on the way to the charger. And I pulled in yeah. and I went, hey, I can't clean my windshield. I really want to do that. So, yeah, that is irritating to me, too. Um, but, uh, I, Robert, I've seen this comment a couple times, and I keep meaning to look it up. I do not know 
about 15 minute cities. Do you know what that is? Right? No, no, I have no idea. So Robert, uh, email me. Um, cause I would, cause I keep forgetting to look it up. I, this is like the third day. I think uh, you've brought it up on the comments and I don't know what that is. So I really would like to just email me a justice with an S okay, uh, at caredge.com. Uh, to Phil's point, aren't there limited places to get fast charging? Yes and no. I mean, yes, it, there there are. And this is one of the points that Kia has made is that even California needs to step it up. The infrastructure is not there yet. The, California has 87,000 uh, EVs. I know they say it in here. Uh, 87,707 chargers, but they need 1.2 million. Wow. So, so that that's a that's a uh, long, long stretch there that we need to get to from so, that. So, so we're not even at ten percent of what they need. No, we'll need. Wow. No, I mean, no, it's the most populous state, but yeah, yeah. No, I get it. To to that, and not, wait, 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 wait. Let me correct you one thing. It's not the most popular. It's the most populous. I I think I said populous. I meant to say populous. If I said okay. populous, yeah, because you know there's uh, there's a lot of California bashers on here. I know there are. No, not I that know, I'm I one know. of them. No, I am. But um, yeah. but <laughs> other people, <laughs> I am more than you are. I know um, you are. <laughs> but uh, but yeah, I mean, but I also look at that and I go, mm -hmm, but do you need? Do you really need? And I don't think you need. And they are talking about level two and DC fast chargers. Yeah. For one, um, you need more level twos. I don't know that you need a ton more fast chargers. Level twos are a lot cheaper to install. I think it's like 10 to one. You can install 10 level two chargers for the cost of, of one uh, DC fast chargers. Wow. Uh, so like, like I said, I went to the mall this weekend. They had all the Tesla fast chargers, but then they had like 12 level twos. I just plugged in at the level two. I didn't need to fast charge. I didn't need, but that's the part of the thing about doing the EV is everywhere you can go where you can, they just have those. And those are you level twos are usually free because they don't pull that much power. They're, they're not charging that fast. I think it would said it would have taken three hours to fully charge my vehicle on that level two. Uh, Cause I had it, my range set up too high. Um, and it, it didn't take that long, but I was just out there and eating lunch and, you know, went and unplugged. And those are, I think, are the best. Those are the best in, in areas. They're just level two where you can go and pop in real fast. Uh, hospitals have them. There are movie theaters have them. It's great. Um, you don't need all the fast chargers. Fast chargers are just for road trips, realistically. Um, and, yeah. and heck, if you, if you get, if, if, Toyota really can produce vehicles that will end up getting 900 plus miles range. Uh, I'm pretty sure you'll just be able to charge up at the hotel you're staying at that night. <laughs> yeah. yeah le level twos are perfect for hotels. Yes. I have yeah. used them. Um, I have used them at hotels all the time. And this is one of the things that I look at. So I, I do travel to the coast a lot because um, I live inland because mm -hmm. uh, I can't afford to live on the coast. Otherwise I just would just wait uh, for that big, uh, that big earthquake. You very well yeah, could end yeah. up having oceanfront property in Sacramento. Yeah, yes. We, yeah. we have these discussions all the time about uh, <laughs> how, how ge geology works. Yeah. Uh, everyone seems to think that California is on the shelf. It's going to break off. And uh, that's just, that's not how geology works. Oh, I'm um, sorry to hear that. <laughs> yeah, I was too. hopeful for me, you. Me, me too, because you yeah. know that. Uh, <laughs> as much as I love going to the coasts, mm -hmm. the places I have trouble with the most are on the coast. Um, mm -hmm. But I go there all the time, and one of the things I look for when I'm booking a hotel is, do they have EV charging? Can I just go up there and and plug in at the hotel? And if I can, I'm looking for that hotel. Okay, so if one doesn't have it and the other one does. Guess which one I'm I'm going to. Same sure. in my area with with Target. I have a Target. I have two Targets. I'm halfway between. I go to one over the other because one has the level two charging. So I can just go there and plug in, and I just go do my shopping and come out. And I've got and, another you know 40, 50 mile range. And okay. 
And and I'm pretty sure both of those targets carry the same stuff. They do. They yeah. do. Um, so I, I think a level two is the future, but B that's where businesses have to start thinking about. It is a shift from a gas station mentality. And I think that's the real thing here that you, you have to do is, is a shift from, from that mentality. It just, it's a different life and it's not hard. It's not difficult. It does not take long. Um, he said, I, I stopped two times on the way to Los Angeles from where I am when I go down to LA same amount of times I would always stop mm -hmm. um, and I just charge up and it's like 15 minutes each stop about what I would normally do anyway so I can use the restroom and then go I, I do have a question for you um, at, at these charging locations do they have restroom facilities at most of them or is it just strictly charging so I have never been to one that did not have, that wasn't near shops of some kind. Okay. Um, so everyone that I've been to, and I hear that they're out there. Um, I just haven't looked at all of them, obviously, but everything in, in California that I've gone to is near like shopping locations and stuff. So yeah, I can always go. There are a lot of times in the back of strip malls. Not always great yeah. to be in the back there, but um, but you can go up to the you know, and they always have the grocery store, or the fast food places, or the mm -hmm. Starbucks, or the whatever. So, like, I've never had a problem with that. I've never been to a freestanding one that's just out by itself, it's usually with something. Gotcha. I, I had no idea because, well, I've never owned an EV yet, yeah. and so I've never had the charge, so you know, I wouldn't know. Yeah, uh, Harry says the two superchargers near them are a mall and a hotel, uh, and which is which is about right uh, from yeah. my experience too. Uh, the superchargers are always near something, uh, except for a window washing station. Yeah. <laughs> so that that is a need that need that has to be addressed. I agree. I agree because there we have gotten used to certain things in that. Uh, you know, going through and cleaning your window or even the drive through car washes. Yeah. Like I think, I think those are the, you know, the quick quacks or whatever ones that are outside of California. I don't know if that's a California thing or not, but um, you know, the, the quick car washes that you go to, like they need to start putting some charging stations in there. People would love to imagine going through the car wash, coming around, plugging in and then doing all your interior vacuuming mm -hmm. and, and wiping everything down. It seems like a no brainer to me. Like that would be a great thing to do. Uh, yeah. But yeah, the, the one thing that EV charging stations don't have is the convenience of the gas stations that they have rolled out over the years. So, so they don't, they, they don't offer dirty buckets of water yes, uh, right. with, with worn out <laughs> squeegee, spongy squeegees uh, and, and paper towels after you've, thrown that dirty water on your windshield and the other windows on your car to try and make them a little cleaner. Yeah. So that yeah. Saying, yeah. yeah. <laughs> they don't have that great technology. Yeah. They, you know, and I and I've been to many gas stations that uh, many uh, many of the buckets that are supposed to have don't even have the water in them. So you <laughs> so you have these dried up spongy squeegee things that yeah. Okay. Um, I know, Susanna, not the ones that leave swirl marks, the touchless ones that are even worse for your paint than those. <laughs> uh, so, uh, you know, um, and, and this gets into one thing I wanted to talk to you about, too. Uh, yeah. You know, I usually keep my cars, run them into the ground 12 to 16 years. Is it viable with EV or after four years, are they no longer? Um, now, EVs last much longer because much less moving parts. And I know I'm going to get Jarrett who goes, show me the numbers. Um, so, you know what, Jarrett, um, I'm thinking we're going to do some uh, car edge electrics, very first pre-recorded videos where we're going to have to sit down and break out the numbers. Uh, I think those will be very valuable for the future, Ray. We talk about this all the time and, and we'll bring out different segments like a video on EV weights 
uh-huh. and charging times and how long they last and how how much battery uh, is and 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 all that. We will have to do some pre-recorded videos to break that all out because I would love to use those as resources because there is a lot of questions. And this wasn't even like an anti-EV question. This was just, this was a legitimate real question. Yeah. Like, hey, you know, is it going to, you know, is my car going to last? You know, is it a throwaway device? Am I going to have to change that battery? Because, you know, everyone knows you're going to have to change that battery every five years and it's going to cost you $50,000 to replace the battery. And you're just like, okay. So we need to do, I do think, you know, it's time for us to do our part to educate where we can and do some of those videos out there and break out the numbers. I'm in. Uh, I'm... So everyone can see them. Cause we do, we do talk a lot about the things that we know, but, um, but I agree that we have not always, although the weight one we did, um, we have not always broken down out the numbers and showed the numbers um, like we maybe should. And okay. and I will agree that we we should do that. Uh, I'm in. I'm. I, you know. I'm. I, there's one thing I'm fairly good at. After having uh, produced in excess of a thousand videos with Zach, um, you know, I'm 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 pretty good at. The re, I even know how to record it on my damn camera and upload oh. it um, so that our video editors can get to it. So. I would be more than happy to participate in that. That, 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 that's my newfound skill set at, at my age. So what I need to do is get everyone to go over to the community. I'll create a post in the community to ask all of their questions because Suzanne has got one, a great one here. Yeah, battery life is something to consider. Not the battery life, but will the technology be around? Is that same, you know, lithium-ion battery and charging connector? going to be around because look we already got if you bought a mustang mach e this year or before that charging connector in two years is going to be completely different yes like okay so you have to charge on a different network than all the other mach e's will be starting in 2025 that is something to consider those are legitimate questions legitimate answers uh that you know that need should be addressed and i, I love those well, yes, let's get some suggestions as to what people yeah. would like us to to uh, do some pre-recorded videos. We can throw some into the show, uh, you know, like one one a day or a couple a week, whatever. Um, you know, we could I think that's called like a donut, isn't it? Uh, I believe so. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Uh, technical terms. Okay. Yeah. 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 So we can crispy cream. <laughs> I don't think that's the term. <laughs> uh, and and Igor, I know he he did mean Duncan. We're going to Duncan it. Uh, yeah, that's I don't know why he just. Used that's the wrong because term. America runs on Duncan. I that's apologize. Right. And right. that, that that here's the perfect segue. And that is where chargers should be because America runs on Duncan. Damn it! <laughs> that's right. <laughs> if every Duncan and Starbucks had a charger, oh man, oh, yeah, you'd never need you would never need a, to build anywhere else. Oh my gosh! Yeah. <laughs> You'd be able, you'd be able to get your caffeine. You'd be able to get your electricity, and you'd have a relatively clean bathroom to use as well. That's right. That's yes. right. Yeah, you you wouldn't have any good donuts out here on the west coast <laughs> uh, because they're all frozen and then thrown in an oven here. Well, you can't have uh, everything. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, I know. Well, you know what time well, it is. I was just going to say, I think it's about your lunchtime, right? It uh, is. It is. Plus, I have to go help a friend with something as well. I am. I am. Um, um, I am in demand today. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, you're always in demand, Ray. I, I don't know demand. about that. But... <laughs> um, I, and speaking of, oh, we do have Courage Electric coming up on, uh, not Courage Electric. Nope. No. Just Courage. We're just yeah. going to leave off the electric. Yes. Uh, with the coach takeover this Saturday. Yes, yes. Right? So yes, we indeed. are, uh, the coaches are going to take over. We're going to do live deal reviews on the air. Uh, Pre-submitted deals, we're going to go over and we're going to call the members of those deals. And we're going to walk through the deal with them. And they're going to be able to ask us questions. So cool. I would love if everyone could, if you have any deals you would like to review, if you do an EV, I will do the show. Otherwise, I'm just producing. 
Um, but if you if you want to see me on the air, I've, I'll do an EV reveal deal. Um, but email me justice at carage.com and put live deal review in your subject. You need to submit your buyer's order or OTD quote full breakdown, not just the number. Yeah. Um, uh, if you don't know how to redact your information, we'll do that. Don't worry. We just need the uh, quote and the VIN. We do need the VIN. That's not private information. Sometimes people black that out. I'm like, that's public information, please. Yeah. Um, send that, uh, your name and your phone number. Email that to us so we can give you a call. It'll be at 7 p.m. on Saturday. The, what is that, the 17th? Um, yeah, the day before Father's Day. So it's yes, 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 yes. Oh man, uh, I have a I have a busy weekend. Are we uh, doing that show Sunday. Zach and I are going to go to a couple Ford dealerships and do some filming. Oh, nice. Um, and then and then I just heard uh, a little while ago that uh, we'll be doing dinner at one of my favorite Italian restaurants uh, Sunday night to uh, celebrate uh, Father's Day. So, oh, night! That is a busy weekend. It is. It is. I'm looking forward to it. And yeah. Igor, you can just email Ray directly that uh, <laughs> that buyer's order, and he'll get right on that for you. Uh, Igor, you're funny. <laughs> so, thank you very much, everyone. We will be back tomorrow with uh, with more uh, something. whatever it is that we do. Yeah, whatever we're talking about. Yeah, terrific. Thank you, everybody. <laughs> Bye.